This person did something horrible. As you can tell by all of these headlines Bruh. that I've conveniently <laughs> blurred out. It's a TikToker. A bad person that got in a lot of trouble. Consequences were real in this story, guys. What exactly did they do? Well, they got cancer. Just kidding. They fucking lied about it. How is it possible to go to jail for lying about cancer? Well, <sighs> Cancer is a horrible disease that will affect one in two people over their lifetimes. I, you know, everyone knows someone who's been affected in some way by cancer. Uh, it's terrible. There's no f joking about it. There is. There's a lot of humor, actually. I take that back. But generally, it's a very serious thing. A disease that in most forms have no true cure and crushes families on a consistent and daily basis. Treatment for cancer is very expensive and most people can't afford it without, you know, really good insurance. Now, if you use the internet to, let's say, leverage your position to get money to pay for your cancer that you have, uh, but let's say you don't actually have that cancer and you're just using that to just get a lot of money and you lie about having cancer, <laughs> well, that's what this bitch did. Madison Russo was a TikTok influencer. Okay, and I say was, she's not dead, but she is no longer an influencer. She said that she had pancreatic cancer and was suffering from it every day. Pancreatic cancer is a very severe form of cancer. Generally speaking, pancreatic cancer is one of the worst. And it's also one that is rarely found until late stage. Not to mention it's deadly. It doesn't respond as well to treatment compared to other cancers. Uh, it's all around just a bad thing. At age 19, Madison tugged the heartstrings of her viewers. She was in the very early and middle stages of her cancer, and many stood by her and wished her the best and, and wanted her to, to beat it. But in reality, it was all a ruse, and this, this bee was fibbing from the very, very beginning. That's right. With a tumor on her spine and claiming over 15 rounds of chemotherapy and 90 rounds of radiation, by the way, she was a strong woman fighting for her life. All a fucking fabricated lie. So in one of Madison's first videos, she talks about her family's history of type 1 diabetes. I have a friend with type 1 diabetes. His name is Satchel. He's a good man. He helps out with the channel a lot. In fact, he helped organize the information in this doc. So if there's anything inaccurate, it's his fault. The video is interesting. And this is my story. So, when my older brother, Tyler, turned 18 years old, he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. With this being said, I was also tested to see if I would develop type 1 diabetes. So when the test came back, um, I ended up being positive for all 5 out of 5 antibodies. And in February of 2020, I was also diagnosed with type 1 at 17 years old. Um, I had yearly lab work done just with my primary care provider as a standard checkup. And aside from starting to feel just a little bit off, um, my lab work came back and my white blood cell counts were not in normal range. And on February 10th of 2022, quite possibly the worst day of my life occurred. Now, in this video, she's always glancing off camera, assuming that she's reading a script, or at least she has talking points, something like that, which doesn't make sense. That's fair. You know, I've got a screen to look at here, and there's nothing interesting at all on it. So that's completely understandable. Just looks a little bizarre in this situation. She then talks about after one of her visits to the doctor, she found that her white blood cell counts were out of a normal range and they needed further testing. Very common in a blood test. She recounts February 10th, 2022 and proclaims that as the worst day of her life, the day that her oncologist called her to tell her that there was a mass on her pancreas. Scared is an understatement. I was terrified and I definitely still am. So, after finding out, I started treatment right away, um, consisting of oral chemo and radiation. So far, I have completed eight rounds of chemo and over 50 rounds of radiation. And then at my three month scan, I was informed that the tumor on my pancreas was shrinking and it was responding to treatment. However, it also spread to my blood and it is acute lymphoblastic leukemia. When your life changes in an instant, and many days are spent vomiting and pain and being restricted with what you can do, your mind also becomes sick. She had stage two pancreatic cancer at the age of 19 years old. Very young, very bad, horrible. Many people get that call on a daily basis. Then she said this, I was terrified 
and I definitely still am. Terrified of being expo exposed for fraud, for, for, for being a fraudster. <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 shut up! Good girl. Now, before all of this, in the beginning of the video, she talks about how her brother had type one diabetes. And it seems like that's not a lie. Uh, but it, what it really seems like is that she's just jealous that this man was getting all the attention with his actual real serious disease. And she tried one-upping him for some sympathy points. At the end of the video, she claimed she had undergone eight rounds of chemo at this point. And by the way, this is very early into her grift. Now I know from personal experience with family and stuff that chemo causes you to lose, you lose hair and there's a whole bunch of terrible side effects. Eight rounds, that's like four to eight months of treatment from what I know, uh, which is not very much. Um, but she looks great for being, you know, being under undergoing chemo for four to eight months. That shit is rough as f I would like to take this time to wish Hank Green the best, by the way. He was recently diagnosed with, I think he has Hodgkin's lymphoma. Not 100% sure. I wish him the best. Grew up with the man. Hopefully he's doing well. Now, Madison offers advice in her video to people struggling with unexplainable health, health issues and says to seek help if something is wrong. That's a rich thing to say coming from someone who's just faking their illness. That's insane. She also says, if you'd look at me, you'd never know that I was sick, which is ironic as well. She also covers still having hair, being able to wear makeup to cover the pain and exhaustion. Uh, and now what I mentioned with the four to eight months of chemo and the hair loss, she covers that. And she says that she still has hair and wears makeup to cover the pain and exhaustion. And she still carries herself well at work and school. Also, she's not sick, by the way, and she would need makeup to make herself look more sick, if anything. It's a very lonely and isolating disease. So please don't take for granted enjoying every moment in your life, even the little ones. Please check in on your friends that seem strong, as those people are often the ones that are struggling the most. If you look at me, you would never know that I am sick. I still have hair, I can put on makeup to hide the exhaustion and the pain, and I carry myself fairly well at work and school. I want you to know that Invisible illness affects so many people across the globe. You could look at somebody from the outside and think they look healthy, but you don't see that inside their body is literally trying to destroy them. She says that invisible illnesses affect many people. Hers is truly invisible to a T. Actually, it's not there, literally. Because of her battle, she gets to speak at her school about her experience fighting cancer and in spite of the odds, maintains a 3.8 GPA and gets an in internship at John Deere. Tractor place. I used to love John Deere tractors. I don't know why, but the green color used to make me salivate as a young man. I love me a John Deere. John Deere green. I wonder how John Deere reacted to finding out one of their interns was faking cancer. Like that one exchange that fellow that got hired by NSA and then got fired directly right after. She talks about advocating for patients and how inspiring people has been her coping mechanism. How virtuous, Madison. Uh, she also drops the old classic cliche, if you're knocked down 10 times, but you get up 10 times, you still win. You still win it. You know, all it takes is one win. Five years, bamboo grows for five years, but it doesn't grow an inch. And then in one day, it grows 60 feet. <gasps> no one's knocking you down, though, Madison. That part makes me angry. It makes me scream like a beast of Nurgle to be honest. Uh, you have really good survival odds, better than most people with cancer. She all, honestly sounds a bit like the fucking liver king when, she, when he's talking about his fight and his plight to unite or whatever. <laughs> she then brings it full circle to say that diabetes and cancer do not define her. Cancer certainly doesn't define her because she doesn't have it. She says she's going to walk across stage at graduation. Yeah, I, I assume you would as well. Yeah, that makes sense. I have been honored to speak to my school about my experience of battling cancer Still finishing out my semester with a 3.85 GPA and landing an internship with one of my dream companies, John Deere, all while taking treatment. Advocating for other patients and inspiring individuals along the way has been a coping mechanism for me. And I hope this story has inspired you as well. You know, when you get knocked down nine times up, you stand up 10 more times. Every single day, I go to war with myself because in order to survive, I have to fight like hell. The five-year outlook of survival is a slim 11%. 11%. At 19 years old, I don't know if I will live to see the day when I graduate college, get married, become a mom, etc. Type 1 diabetes 
does not define me. Pancreatic cancer does not define me. Leukemia does not define me. I will be able to walk across the stage at my college graduation, able to get married and become a mom. I just have to continue to fight and advocate for a cure. She then proceeds to get some sympathy points from her viewers by telling them that her days are so hard because she has no energy to get ready in the morning or just to get up at all because of how difficult undergoing treatment for cancer is. It's a terrible, terrible, horrible thing. She says how it's okay if she doesn't go to the gym, that even if she gets a bare minimum of a, of a small walk-in, she feels accomplished and can go home feeling good because her body's fighting to stay alive. Maybe it is just best that she takes it day by day. So after all of this, everything started crashing down. She got caught in a really hilariously uh, sad way. It's very, it's fucked up, dude. At this point in the story, there's money being donated to her because of her cancer, her content is being shared, and uh, people are starting to wonder, is this real? In fact, some health professionals were really wondering if she was telling the truth. The first big slip up that Madison made was posting a picture of her chemo treatment IV. She had a straw in her nose and just like this tape job, which looks like something I would tape. It looks like just tape from Staples, not medical tape, which is true. It's not medical tape, it's Staples staples tape box tape that little scotch tape i think it's what it's called it looks just so badly done that it I, it's, I mean it's embarrassing if you're gonna lie in front of thousands of people online about having cancer to get money and, and farm sympathy i would spend a little bit more time taping yourself up tbh but at the same time anyone who's gonna lie about something like this is not gonna be very smart they're gonna be sociopathic and just overtly confident in their in their actions plus there's just a ceiling fan and just a random register for an ac vent up in the ceiling which that's not how it's laid out at hospitals uh, at least no hospital i've ever been to they have very specific uh ways to handle air in the buildings and <laughs> ceiling fans are not that common i don't think at least <laughs> I don't know, but it's just, it's very suspicious to say the least. And look at the smile, man. She's cheesing. She knows she's getting away with this. It's very impressive. After this major red flag, people were still wondering how she had all of her hair after the chemo and radiation. Uh, and she said, all you need is a bit of biotin, which is not true at all, bro. There's so much that goes into it and not having enough biotin does not make you keep your hair when your body is being destroyed from the inside out by radiation and chemotherapy. That's just not how it works. Is biotin good for the hair? Sure, but so is not having your body destroyed by radiation to treat cancer. So biotin is not really gonna undo all that. In fact, a woman who had actually dealt with cancer and had undergone radiation and chemo, she commented and sort of uh, set the record straight a little bit. This story is so wild to me. Also, how come she has her hair still, but wears a wig in most pictures, but not when she makes videos? Face emoji. She couldn't even commit to the fucking bit, dude. She just she just kept her hair and her looks. The, it's the laziest lie of all time. She should have at least shaved her fucking head. So her, her, you know? People start to get very, very, very angry. They start catching on to Madison's lies. Why is she wearing wigs, but she still has all her hair? The wig thing, I assume, is to just perpetrate some sort of illusion that she is, in fact, losing her hair and she doesn't like anyone seeing it when, uh, when it's lost. Which is fair. It's fine to be insecure about something like that. How much money did this lying woman make, uh, from all this, from this just grift? $37,000. That is a lot of support. That is unbelievable how much money you can make from just being a liar and trolling and scamming people. I mean, this is truly an epic troll. Epic troll, dude. We love a good sob story. One guy even donated $1,000 to Madison because he, he his heartstrings were, were being tugged by seeing someone so young being eaten away by cancer. I cannot imagine what this poor man felt when he realized she was just a lying piece of shit. On top of raising $37,000 on a lie to just farm sympathy from people and make people feel bad for you, just to simply get money, she also did a massive disservice and caused a, a, a horrible rift in, uh, you know, a, a lot of people's lives, I'm sure. On top of betraying all the people that donated $37,000 to her because of her sympathy lie, she also betrayed a bunch of real cancer patients and communities 
that she was welcomed into because they thought she had cancer and they were being nice. And that's what it's all about is having a community and people that you can relate to and, and you know, a support system. You need that. Before everyone knew this was fake, she made people undergoing treatment feel worse about themselves because she's able to keep up with what she's able to do. She's this hero with a 3.8 GPA, a John Deere internship, still long, beautiful hair. What are they? Are they doing something wrong? Are all these other people that are undergoing radiation and chemo that look like the average cancer patient? Um, are they doing something wrong? Beautiful Maddie. Oh, she's so she's such an angel. We should give her money. No, dude, that is, it just makes it so much more f***ed up. It makes it so much more f***ed up when you compare the people in the communities that she was in that welcomed her in there with open arms. It's unbelievable. A woman named Anna even wrote about this saying, and so there I was sitting on the couch, looking at that post and asking myself what I was doing wrong. Why was I bald, weak, and couldn't even think about walking? let alone running. Walking to the car to go to the hospital was a challenge. Walking to the car to get to the hashtag hospital was a hashtag challenge. I was thinking that I did something wrong or maybe that I was not hashtag strong enough. No, you're not any of those things. You are a perfectly beautiful human being who is doing one of the most difficult things human beings can do, beating the f out of cancer. And Madison is a lying piece of shit. You can see the effects on Anna versus the effects on Maddie. And even Anna's husband commented on all this. My wife connected with Maddie as she was afflicted with the same blood cancer as her. And we cheered her, commiserated her, amplified her message, and supported her GoFundMe. Well, it was all a lie. Maddie does not have cancer. Among those victims duped by her scam were John Deere Company, St. Ambrose University, the National Pancreatic Foundation, and Project Purple. The take was $37,000 belonging to nonprofits, business, school districts, and private citizens. This is an organization's response when they found out she was in the wrong. The Dr. Brent Old Pancreatic Cancer Support and Awareness Team is saddened to hear that one of our recipients in 2022 has been charged with fraudulently accepting assistance from our fund. Our goal has been and continues to be to provide financial support to 100% of pancreatic cancer patients in our community. That's awesome. Also, she's a liar. Now you see the charge with fraudulently accepting assistance? Yeah, she got charged with fraudulently accepting assistance, guys. And it, there was massive f happenings in that a couple days ago. <laughs> it's awesome. The consequences are real. So the bitch went to jail. As you can imagine, she fraudulently scammed people and lied about having cancer. Not a good thing to do. Her wig was taken as evidence when she was arrested. Um, there's a whole bunch of other confiscated items. Crazy. Medical equipment, a vehicle, seized, and more. A massive cancer scam. Not only. On top of this, she stole pictures from real cancer patients and uploaded them as her own. What the f She is hashtag drained from her chemo era. This isn't even her. She just stole this one from someone and and just, yeah. She betrayed a bunch of people with cancer and stole people's money because she wanted clout, fame, or attention. I have no idea, man. She betrayed her mom who, who, who iced her out and just admitted that it was all a lie. She didn't even fucking know. She said she never knew about any of the appointments or anything. Her, her mom wasn't involved. Some people find it hard to believe that her mom wasn't involved, but it doesn't, it doesn't really seem like, I, I don't know. It's, it doesn't matter. Needless to say, she's guilty, by the way. She just, she just pled guilty the other day, which is awesome. First degree theft. She admitted to lying about having pancreatic cancer and a tumor the size of a football. She originally pled not guilty, but now there's a bunch of evidence and uh, yeah, it's over for her, bud. What an idiot. God. Support people who actually have cancer. 10 years behind bars. Pretty based. Consequences.